Welcome to Warcraft World's podcast. My name is Rachel, and this is a podcast where we step behind the veil to take a look at some long lost and little known urban legends and spooky stories. The next story, unfortunately, doesn't really fall under long lost or nor little known. However, it does fall under urban legend, spooky story, completely bonkers tale, and what the actual hell is happening there. There's so much going on in this story that I, along with probably a million other podcasters, had to tell it. Located on Main Street in downtown Los Angeles is a 14 story building. Built in the 1920s, this hotel was, at the time, a budget hotel. Three hoteliers, William Banks Hanna, Charles L. Dix and Robert Hell Shops, built the hotel as a destination for business travellers and tourists alike. Designed by Loy Lester Smith in the Bureau Art style and constructed by W. W. Payden, the hotel cost $1.5 million to complete and boasted an opulent marble lobby with stained glass windows, potted palms and alabaster statuary. The three hoteliers invested about $2.5 million in the enterprise, with the knowledge that several similar hotels have been established elsewhere downtown. But within five years of its opening, the United States sank into the Great Depression. Although the hotel flourished as a fashionable destination throughout the 1940s, the decades beyond saw the hotel decline. And yes, this hotel is just a stone's throw from LA's infamous Skid Row. So much so that this hotel, which was rebranded Stay on Main in 2011, is now being converted into low-income and homeless accommodation. This hotel has been the inspiration for a number of TV series and movies, including The Hotel Courts and American Horror Story. Oh, and unsurprisingly, it's also listed as one of the most haunted hotels in the world. Welcome to the dark, twisted, sordid, and quite frankly bonkers tale of the Cecil Hotel. The hotel that you can check into, but that you may never check out of. I'm just going to say that the Americans pronounce this as the Cecil Hotel, but I'm going to give it the English pronunciation, which is the Cecil Hotel. The hotel has a reputation for sudden deaths or suicides. Official numbers list 16. However, a manager who worked there for 10 years says that there were at least 80 deaths within the hotel during her time, and that there were up to three 911 calls made every day from within the hotel walls. The last official death to be reported at the hotel was that that of an unidentified man whose body was found outside of the hotel. Some believe that he jumped from the hotel's roof. The LAPD said that the cause of death hadn't been released. One reporter called the hotel a hotbed of death, and many people wonder why it is still standing despite all that has happened and continues to happen there. The first documented suicide at the Cecil occurred on the evening of January 22, 1927, when Percy Ormond Cook, 52, shot himself in the head while inside his hotel room after failing to reconcile with his wife and child. The Los Angeles Times reported that he was rushed to the receiving hospital with a slim chance of survival. Death records reveal that he died the same evening. The next reported death was in 1931 when a guest, W.K. Norton, died in his room after taking poison capsules. Through the 1940s and 1950s, more suicides at the Cecil occurred. The last recorded suicide was in 1992, when an unidentified male either jumped or was pushed from the building's roof. But the hotel isn't just known for suicides. Of course it's not. As well as being a place for people to rent a room on one of the upper stories and then leap to their deaths, the Cecil Hotel has also been home to a handful of serial killers. In the 1980s, Richard Ramirez, who would later become known as the Night Stalker, lived in one of the hotel's upper rooms. Ramirez engaged in most of, if not all, of his killing spree while staying there. He reportedly stripped off his bloody clothes in the alley outside of the building before climbing the interior stairs to his residence in his blood-stained underwear. On August 30th, 1985, a group of Los Angeles residents spotted him in the street and prevented him from escaping until police arrived to arrest him. In 1989, Ramirez was convicted of 13 murders and sentenced to death, although he would ultimately die of cancer in 2013. Another serial killer stayed at the Cecil in 1991, possibly because he sought to copy Ramirez's crimes. While there, he strangled and killed at least three prostitutes, crimes which he was later convicted of in Austria. Ted Bundy is also rumoured to have stayed at the hotel, however verifying that has proved hard and is believed to be an urban legend. Another tale that may be fact or fiction is that of Elizabeth Short aka the Black Dahlia. Her murder, one that was gruesome and became notorious around the world, remains unsolved to this day. A few journalists have reported that, in the week leading up to her death, the Cecil's bar, as well as bars in the surrounding area, were some of her favourite places to hang out. She was supposedly seen in the Cecil Hotel bar on January 11th, 1947, just three days before she was murdered. The biggest story to hit the Cecil came just two years after the hotel became stay on Main. At that time, the hotel housed both long-term residents and guests, 
with the lower two floors being for those who lived in the building. The two floors above that were the hostel and the remaining floors were the hotel rooms. One long-term resident stated that during a time when the hotel housed only those in need of a place to live, anything above the sixth floor was tantamount to a death sentence and that those who lived up there may as well never leave the hotel alive. In February 2013, guests staying in the hotel, which was charging around $30 a night, began to complain of low water pressure. When water did flow, they were complaining the water was discoloured to the point of looking rusty. Maintenance workers went to the roof to investigate and what they found in one of the tanks shocked them. Floating in the water was the naked and rapidly decomposing body of a young woman. The young woman was identified as Eliza Lamb and her story has been told a million times in the last 10 years. Eliza was a lone female traveller from Canada who, since arriving in the US, had been in regular contact with her parents back home. Her contact abruptly stopped on January 31st and on February 1st her parents reported her missing. Footage of her acting erratically in one of the hotel's elevators went viral. She was seen to duck in and out of the car, press numerous buttons and peer around corners as though trying to see if she was being followed. Eliza had been diagnosed with depression and bipolar disorder, but according to witnesses in and around the hotel, including hotel management and other guests, her behaviour was odd and erratic. She was staying in the hostile part of the hotel and repeatedly locked the door, barring those she was sharing a room with from entering. She also left the notes telling them to go away or go home and required a password for people to enter. After two days, the hotel management moved her to a room of her own. Eliza also attended a taping of the popular TV talk show Conan, but was escorted from the premises by security due to disruptive behaviour. Police searched the hotel to the extent that they legally could. They searched Lamb's room and had police dogs go through the building, including the rooftop. But the dogs were unsuccessful in detecting her scent. But we didn't search every room, Sergeant Rudy Lopez said later. We could only do that if we had possible cause, but to believe a crime had been committed. On February 6, a week after Lamb had last been seen, the LAPD decided more help was needed. Flies with her image were posted in the neighbourhood and online. It brought the case to the public's attention through the media. On February 13th, nearly two weeks after her disappearance, the police released the now infamous elevator footage. The video, which comes in at nearly two and a half minutes long, made many viewers feel unsettled. Many people said that they felt that she was on drugs, perhaps ecstasy, or that she was trying to escape from someone pursuing her. No one was quite sure how she ended up in the water tank, as there were no ladders attached to either side of them, nor is anyone certain of why she escaped the roof. The roof and the tanks, I believe, were also locked and alarmed, so somebody should have been alerted that someone was going up there. It's generally believed that she shed her clothes once she realised that she was drowning in an effort to reach the top of the tank. Eliza's tragic death was ruled as accidental, with a psychotic episode being a triggering factor. She was just 21. In 2021, Netflix released a documentary series about Eliza's disappearance. The Vanishing at the Cecil Hotel interviewed people who'd lived and worked in the hotel during Eliza's stay. One of those people was former manager Amy Price, who worked at the hotel between 2007 and 2017. It was she who was quoted as saying that during her time there, she witnessed up to 80 deaths and dealt with thousands of 911 calls from within the hotel. So what are the hotel now? In 2017, the year that Amy left, the hotel began to undergo more renovations. These were halted in 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. In the months that renovations had stopped, people filmed all kinds of strange things happening within the hotel, from lights that came on one day but were off the next, and fires starting in unoccupied rooms. Prior to that, people who had stayed when the Cecil was a functioning hotel had reported shadowy figures. Some had even been photographed. Stranger still are the photographs that appear to show spirits leaving the hotel via the room windows high above the street. During the time while the hotel was shut down, internet personality Pete Monzingo moved into an apartment directly across from the hotel and began to document its daily life. Much like others before him, while the hotel was empty and awaiting the renovations, he recorded lights turning on and off, fires and other strange activity. Ghosts have appeared in some of his videos and he's spotted at least one person climbing onto the roof and of the vicinity of the water tanks that Eliza drowned in and not coming back down. Pete says that on average the road around the hotel is closed at least once a week while authorities deal with whatever is happening inside and he's been banned from entering the property. However, that hasn't stopped him from keeping an eye on what happens within the hotel. Some of the residents living within the hotel's walls keep in contact with him via messenger and their stories are as creepy as you can imagine them to be. 
knocking in water pipes, shadowy ghost sightings and the mayhem that comes from housing so many people in such a strange building. A video taken during renovation work showed a door opening and closing of its own accord. Some claim that the video showed an automatic door, however the motion along with the door audibly slamming shut seemed to show something else being in control. Accidents, deaths and murders apparently still happen on the property, which makes you ask the question, just what is going on at the Cecil Hotel? Just looking at the photographs of the hotel can give some people, including it myself, feelings of gloom. A sensation that all isn't right and that some kind of presence is attached to the building. Some believe that the hotel may be built on an indigenous American burial ground. Buildings that are found on such plots regularly see some kind of strange activity, including shadow figures, orbs and disembodied voices. Others believe that the hotel is just straight up cursed, that all that's happened there over the years has seeped into the bricks and causes a feedback loop of people repeating what those who have gone before them have done. Another theory is that the hotel is a portal to hell, a place where the veil is thin between the human world and the underworld. Numerous people have held paranormal investigations within the hotel, Nearly all of them have had some kind of result including ghostly figures, strange voices and sounds echoing through the empty property. Some have found evidence of black magic and Satanism. Some have even filmed spirits following them along the hallways. What we do know is that in the last six months there have been multiple calls from in and around the hotel. Crimes including abuse, theft of all kinds, stolen vehicles and homicide. There has been at least one person who has jumped from the hotel and another who has tragically hanged themselves from a balcony. The hotel definitely feels weird. People who have stayed there have reported feeling the same, and those who live there now are still reporting the same strange oppressive feeling. The mystery behind the Cecil Hotel may never be solved, as will some of the stories that have come from within its walls. For now, it still stands over Main Street, its presence a constant reminder that no matter how hard we try, evil is ever present. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the strange tale of the Cecil Hotel. The hotel where you could check in, but may never check out. If you like your books a little on the weird side, please feel free to check out our website at www.roswellpublishing.co.uk. Thank you so much for listening, and until next time, stay spooky. Stay spooky.